Hey everyone, happy Tuesday. I hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving, but you know Tuesdays are my day. You know why? That's right, another Tuesday, another mortgage tip with It's Your Girl, hashtag j -Load in the building. I hope you guys are having a fantastic start to your week here. Um, today is Giving Tuesday. Um, it's a it's the second Tuesday after, I'm sorry, it's the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. And it's just a way for you to give back to the community, whether it's your time, um, your energy, um, whether it's via donation. Let's give back to the local community. As long as we pour into our communities, our communities will continue to thrive and be a better place to, to live in, okay? So I'm gonna give you, besides my tip today, I'm gonna give you, um, the best thing I can give you today, which is some advice. Now, I read this, um, so I'm gonna credit them. I did not write this. Um, I just happened to be looking for something today and came across this and I thought, wow, this is amazing and I want to share this. So I read this on Instagram from um, the Startup Co. Um, and I wanna say it was posted by the Business Magnets and it says, hey, the top 10 things that I wish I knew in my 20s or my 30s. Now I will tell you age is nothing but a number and it's never too late to change um, your mindset, your thinking, your work habits, you can always change it. But that is what the post said. So I'm gonna read these 10 to you and then I'll get into my mortgage tip. So the first one is if you have a dream, go chase it because it's not going to come your way without effort, okay? Number two, you cannot move forward if you are stuck and focused on the past. So you gotta move on. Number three, be so busy improving yourself that you don't have time to pay attention to anything or anyone that distracts you from your growth. Number four, don't use your energy to worry. Use your energy to believe, to create, to trust, glow, and heal. Number five, most times you have to go through something that absolutely destroys you so that you can figure out who you really are. Number six, sorry, speak less and observe more. Not everything needs a reaction. Remember, your attention is a currency, so use it wisely. And number seven, never be embarrassed to struggle. There is absolutely no shame in working hard to get what you want. People's opinions do not pay your bills. Number eight, some people will judge you for changing. Others will celebrate you for growing. So choose your circle carefully. Number nine, work on things people can't take away from you. Things like your mindset, your character, and your personality. And number 10, struggle is temporary. Sacrifices are like investments. Give up the short-term comfort for the long-term win. Be focused and of course, stay patient. So I hope that this helps you wherever you are in your life. Um, those really helped me and I wanted to give this back to you as well. So now to my tip. So I often get the question or a lot of the times when people are getting ready to do a mortgage, they talk to their family and their friends first, right? And all of them have opinions. And not always are those opinions the right opinions or the right guidance for everyone. Because I say it a lot, everyone's story when it comes to a mortgage is different. Everyone's financial story, everyone's goals are all different when buying a home. Yes, if traditionally you can put down 20% down you avoid mortgage insurance, you don't have to escrow, you have more equity, um, you typically get better rates, but that's not always true either. Um, but So I wanted to give you a comparison with putting 5% down or putting 20% down, and I'm gonna compare this over 10 years. So before I compare it, I wanna be very clear to you that statistically, most borrowers will refinance their homes once every seven years if they do not sell in seven years. 
So I'm stretching it out because I want to give you a longer view for, of course, this is my opinion. Um, and so I ran numbers because I want to show you how putting 5% um, is still financially a good situation, even in the short and the long term, if you can afford um, the payment that comes with it. So I'm going to break it down little by little to give you the full picture, and then you can decide whether you feel that this is a good option because you don't always have to wait till you have 10% or 15% or they always say, well, it's better if, well, let's see, let's compare, right? So we all know rates today, um, because I'm not allowed to give you exact rates, rates are around 7%. So that's what I'm gonna use for my, um, my scenario today. So I'm using a $400,000 purchase price and we're gonna do it at 5% down and then we're gonna do a 400,000 purchase price with 20% down, okay? So let's write that first. So 5% down payment um, on a 400K home, all right, is 20K, okay? And then your 20% down payment on a 400K home is 80K. All right, so the difference here is $60,000. And this is just down payment. I'm not even talking about closing costs. This is just down payment, okay? Now, estimated at 7% interest rate and mortgage insurance, because you'll have that at the 5% down because you don't have 20% equity, your estimated mortgage payment, principal and interest, and mortgage insurance, okay? So 5% payment, okay? And I'm gonna put P-I-M-I, -I. okay? This does not include taxes and insurance um, every month, okay? Um, is estimated at 26, 48, 33 a month. And I always put estimated because I never wanna get in trouble with whoever watches my videos, okay? So your 20% down payment PI, there is no MI, so principal and interest only, um, is going to have you right around $22.37 a month. Estimated. And again, I'm estimate, I'm estimating um, at 7% interest rate. Okay? So the difference, obviously, because this is important, the difference between the 5% down and the um the 20 percent down there's a 411 dollar difference a month okay and i already told you the difference right here is 60k but i did say that people are saying hey rates are going to change um or that they should go down uh in the first or second quarter of next year. So I'm going to estimate this that they don't change for a year. All right? Because I want worst case scenario here. So let's say in a year, rates are estimated to go down in the four. So I'm just going to pick a rate of 4.75 for my scenario. Okay? So if we say in a year, if rates drop in Q, uh, uh, to 4.75%, now this payment, if rates drop, okay, to 4.75 in 12 months. Let's look at what the actual new payment would be, okay? Because that's what is super important. So this payment now on the 5% option is going to drop to 210233 if you refinance and the 20% option is going to drop to 1669 this is if rates drop to 4.75% okay 
So there's still definitely your $400 or so difference in payment, obviously, because it's the same interest rate and we're just dropping it down. But I want to talk about financial investment. And I always go back to um, the COVID times or the pandemic, because one of the things that caught everyone off guard or that brought it to light was that there wasn't enough, enough savings. Um, people didn't save enough money for being laid off or not being able to work or their hours being cut. And so it caused issues where borrowers now had to dive into credit card use and their 401ks, uh, their stocks, their bonds, maybe refinancing their homes um, just to keep their cells afloat um, until the we are where we are kind of today, right? But then we are now in um, inflation and everything costs more. Um, so if you are already in a bind, now you're possibly in a bigger bind. So the reason I'm doing the video is because I want to talk about the savings in assets that you will have um, if you put less money down and keep that padding, um, even if it's just for your own peace of mind, right? So let's talk about this. So over 10 years, because that's what this is about. So over 10 years, remember the first year you're gonna pay this right here. So at 5%, I just wanna make sure you can see it. So at 5%, first year this is going to total in this payment right here so 26 48 33 times 12 um, is going to equal 31 7 96 okay and then right around uh when year nine come i'm sorry wait after the first year we have nine years left of our new payment because we're gonna refinance, okay? So we have 108 months left at our new payment of 21, okay? And this is going to total $227,051.64. So if we add both of these together, that gives us 258. 831.60, but of course we gotta remember our initial investment, just down payment, I'm not talking about closing costs here. Our initial down payment is $20,000, but then we have to refinance and there's costs associated with refinancing that can range from 35 to $5,000. Of course, the lower is if you stay with your current lender, okay? So I'm gonna estimate worst case scenario, $5,000. So our investment is $25,000. Okay, this is with purchase and refi. So total investment over 10 years, if you never refinance again, never make an extra payment, obviously all of those things is $283,831.60. Now you may be able to see this, but you can always call me on this, right? So now if we do the 20% option, your first year, and let me just block this off so we don't, you know, confuse it. So your first year is going to be at the 2237. So 2237 times 12 is going to give us $26,844. And then we have 108 months of payments left at the refi amount, which is 1669. Okay, and this is going to equal $180,252. If we total these two together, it's $207,096. But our initial investment, not including closing costs, was $80,000. Plus, we're going to put another $5,000 because we got to refinance. So our initial investment was $85,000. If we total these two together, over 10 years, it's $292.96. So if you notice, over 10 years, by going the 5% down option, 
you have a savings of 82,000, I'm sorry, 8,200. $64.40. Okay? So, I say this to say, sometimes going to 20% option isn't what's right for you. Yes, to some, it's right. But, if you know, to some, some people may not want to buy a home if they don't have perfect credit. Well, you can get a home if you don't have perfect credit, right? But there's things that go along with that. So, one of the things that happens on a 5% is that obviously you're gonna have mortgage insurance. But as I'm showing you here, over 10 years, if you're looking at this dollar for dollar, you still are gonna pay less over the life of this 10 year span. Now keep in mind, most people will refinance um, once in seven years. Most people will sell their home within 10 years. So. Hopefully this makes sense to you or just gives you some type of vision. And that's why I always tell borrowers, don't always shop perfect scenarios or just shop rate because there's so much more that if you have someone that's going through these scenarios with you to really show you your mortgage options, you have the opportunity to sit down and review this, not just in the short term, because yeah, in the short term, you're gonna save $411, but you're also gonna be out of pocket 60 grand more, right? But if you can afford that $411 a month extra and pad your account for just peace of mind or for investing purposes or to let your money make money, going the 5% option may be a better route for you. So anyways, if you're not getting this from your loan officer, if you just go in and it's very clear cut, this is what you get, this is your interest rate, or if you're only shopping interest rate, I tell you to kind of sit back and really just take an opportunity to get a second opinion, to ask someone, hey, this is what I'm thinking, here's my life goals, here's my family goals, I have a kid going off to college soon, really talk about what is going on for the next 10 years of your life? We can put together a plan for you like this and break down the numbers for you. Ultimately, we don't make your mortgage payment or pick the option for you, but it's my job to give you the best advice that I possibly can, and then you will choose your option. So I know this is a longer video than normal, but I thought it was so extremely important to put this out there, especially in today's market. It is a great time for my first time home buyers who, um, or even if you're a second time home buyer that wasn't able to compete in the market last year, I'm seeing builders come off their home prices, 40, 50 K. I'm seeing homes sitting on the market longer. Uh, sellers are giving incentives, paying for repairs. So maybe you were, you know, frustrated before and just didn't want to go through this rat race of trying to, you know, plead why they should give you the home. Well, now is a better time for you to buy it. And whether it's a year from now, five years from now, four years, three years from now, I believe there will always be an opportunity for you to refinance and lower your interest rate. But of course, you have to be very comfortable with paying the mortgage payment that's out there now because the last thing I want you ever do is to be house poor. Nobody wants to work just to pay bills. That's not fun. So anyways, I hope this is helpful. I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your week. I want you obviously to be safe. I want you to be blessed. Um, and I'll talk to you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.